excited about today's episode because we're all itching to travel. <laughs> we're just talking about that right now. We are all um, wanting to escape. Um, but I want to talk about how you learn to create travel for your business and for your life and for your lifestyle. As a travel writer, I never set out to become one. It wasn't a job that I applied for. That's right. I was initially drawn to journalism. Uh, so I went and I studied for a journalism degree. Yeah. And I remember showing up for one lecture and I was partying in those days and didn't go to all my lectures. But sure. there was one where the professor spoke about the different types of journalism. Yeah. And with some disgust in his mouth, he said, there are these journalists out there who will go and write about their adventures abroad and get free trips and drive sports cars just so they can review them. And it's like, oh, and I remember distinctly writing travel writer, you know, that, where can I sign where up? Can I sign up? Yeah. I'd love yeah. to travel. I backpacked quite a lot by that stage already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, had the travel bug, which is a tenacious yes, little beast. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Um, this all came about, which is the result of an accident. I was run down by a car That's on my right. way to work. Yes. Which is not something anybody should ever want. That happened here. That happened here in Vancouver. In Vancouver. Tell me about that. I'd bought myself a scooter for yes. the summer to kind of make life a little interesting. Um, to all you scooter uh, <laughs> enthusiasts out there, this is a story you're going to want to hear. And you hear yeah. the stories about motorbikes being dangerous and all this kind of stuff. But like a soldier in the trenches, you never think it's going to be you. That's right. It's going to be someone else. Uh, and I was, I'm a particularly cautious rider, driver. Um, I was on my way to work one morning and a car went straight through a stop sign. It just didn't break. Wow. As you would expect it to. Absolutely. And uh, I was gunning my 49 cc's for all it had, my powerful live free, ride hard, rock star um, scooter. Yeah. And this car just went straight into me. Um, and when I came to, there was a paramedic putting an oxygen mask on my face. Oh my God. My first concern was for my bike. My bike. Yeah. yeah. And I remember the paramedic was like, Your bike's done, mate. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's done. Yeah. Um, and uh, I broke my kneecap. You know, they took me off to the hospital and they say, yeah, it's a fracture in the, the patella. Um, mobsters break kneecaps for a reason. It's mm. an excruciatingly painful oh my God. thing to break in your body, bone. Wow. But it's the luckiest break of my life, hands down. Because, you know, sometimes wow. we need a, 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 a brush with mortality yes. to remind us yes. that we don't have nearly as much time as we think we do. Well, also... I mean, I remember in 2008, uh, that was the last job I ever had. And I remember the economy was just dying and uh, the place I was working at said, oh, well, we're laying off everybody in, in the senior sort of realm. Um, and so you're one of those people. And I sat there to myself, I'm like, oh no, what am I going to do? And realize, and thinking doom, like, you know, oh my goodness, I've got to go look for something. And this was like the best thing for me. And like, what am I going to do? And then you realize, oh. This was the best thing that ever happened to my life. We, you know, we, we talk about every cloud as a silver lining. Absolutely. You know, as a cliche. But bad things happen, doors close, and other doors open. And we can't always see that. And the decisions we make and the attitude that we bring with it has a lot to do with that. Um, you know, I, I received a $20,000 insurance settlement mm -hmm. from that for that broken kneecap. Right. Um, not a $2 million. It wasn't a lottery ticket, you know, winning lottery ticket, but it was enough. It was enough to make me think mm. and to really dwell on my own mortality. Like I could have been killed. Sure. There is so much I want to see and do. You, I'd met people traveling around the world on that one year big adventure and you never think it's going to be you. Yeah. But what if, what if it could be me? But you saw this new freedom, travel, travel, travel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, it's a blue sky. You start thinking, Absolutely. what if, what if, what, I mean, how would this work? Well, if I take that $20,000, I get around the world plane ticket that's open ended for 12 months, wow. go by myself, live out of a backpack, sell everything I've got for as much money as I can in the bank, skirt all the expensive countries, yeah. don't go to Western Europe, yes. you know, go to uh, South America, Central America, Southeast Asia, you know, India, yeah. you, you suddenly it's like, okay, uh, you know, in some places, uh, my budget was $35 a day. Wow. In some places, that's not a lot. In other places, like in India, that you can do absolutely fine for yes, $35 right. a day. Right. So th this plan started and life, it's so, it's so funny because there's all these these herrings start being thrown at you, all these opportunities. Hey, do you want to become a concert promoter? We've got big talent, big budget, all these things. And But hang on, I, I, I like the, the, this travel thing. And I kept coming back to it. And 
it, it, it wasn't as simple as I got this money and I booked my plane ticket. Um, and I remember probably the most exciting day of my life was walking into it was a travel cut to remember that, that, that agency. Yes. And I walked in and I said, I want to buy a round the world ticket. And, and those don't exist anymore. They, they, Do I don't, they? They, I don't, they don't exist in the same form. I don't know what Certainly at the same take. price. Yeah. It was based on uh, continents, how many continents I'd visit. So I went to five continents. Wow. And I thought, I'm, I want to capture everything that happens to me on this one year because I want to remember it because this is it. I'm going to come back. I'm going to find a job. Um, but this one year, um, me traveling around the world, I want to... So you had this vision that you would come back and actually go work for somebody. Yeah. After. yeah okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This was no, just your adventure. It was just yeah. an adventure. But, yeah. I want to, but I definitely want to write about it. I want to sure. capture it. Um, there wasn't... I'm not, I don't want to become... A, a travel writer, I don't want to become an author, sure. you know, so it was just, I'm just going to capture this thing because one day I'm going to be hopefully an old grizzled guy sitting on a rocking chair on the back porch and I'm going to say, look at this one year where I went traveling around the world and look at all these things that I did and all these people I met and what I learned and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then I really thought, well, I don't want to write it down because it's going to get stolen. What if it, that happens? I mean, sure. what if I put it on the web? What if I write this down and upload it and put it onto a website? That's a very safe way to back things up. Absolutely. You know, I used to have a, a thumb drive on a necklace, on a, a piece of leather strap around my neck with all my stuff. I mean, that's how I used to travel because, yeah. you know, you could lose everything. Absolutely. But at least I'd have that. And I thought even safer is if I can just upload it, FTP it up to a website. Um, and so I started, I built that. I knew how to build websites from one of my former careers. I built that manually. You know, it was before WordPress and any other stuff. It's like hand coding HTML. And I created this little thing, which today is called a blog. Yeah. Back then, it wasn't really a thing. Um, and I put up, I, just to um, get the, the ball rolling, I, I thought, let me take some of my previous travels. I just typed them up and I put them up there and sent an email to all my friends and family. Hey, you can follow me if you want to. You don't have to, but this yeah. is, I'm going to be updating this thing. Uh, I'm going to ask every per person I meet the same three questions on this journey. Yes. Everyone. I'm going to review every re uh, restaurant and hotel and ho hotel hostel and activity I do. Not not for a guidebook, just so I remember it. Yes. Uh, and when people say like, well, you know, where I'm going to Bolivia. Didn't you go there? I can say, just look at my website there. That's because uh, I don't know, you know, that, that, I'm just going to create this, this dump of information. Sure. And a friend of mine said, you know, this is great. Why don't you pitch a newspaper? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Sent a Who knew? Who knew? Okay. I right. mean, uh, like, I, okay. Oh, travel editor at the Vancouver Sun .com. That's right. I'm going, my, my name's Robin. I got hit by a car. I'm taking this money. I'm going traveling around the world. I'm going to write up for myself um, once a week. Would you be interested? And she got back to me right away. And, you know, in life, we have these enablers, these people yes. who come along out of nowhere yes. and just help you get from. A to B. Absolutely. Um, these mentors. And, yes. you know, I wouldn't say she was a mentor, but she was certainly an enabler. Yes. Because in my many, many years since, it's very rare that an editor replies to you mm. immediately and says, I agree. this is great. Can we do a column? Yeah. Um, and so that is how I basically evolved into a travel wow. writer. When I go around, when I'm, when I'm on, I'm on like on my phone, I'm like videoing things and stuff like that. And that's my memory bank. You write books. Let me see your book here. Yeah, so this yeah. is this I brought in a copy of the Great Global Bucket List. So, yeah. um, Thank you know, you. from that initial blog post, I started writing for newspapers and magazines, and then I pitched the idea of a TV show, uh, which got picked up, and we ended up filming forty episodes in thirty six countries. Yeah, and that was uh, following myself and another travel writer doing our jobs as travel writers. And the question was, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? What would yeah. make a good story? And I kind of put a lot of those stories uh, that turned into a column for the Globe and Mail. And then it kind of turned into this book idea of here's the great global bucket list. These are the things that I always wanted to do and I actually went out and did them. Oh, I love it. If there's people traveling around the world right now, it's a different, it's a different world out there for security, safety, even getting cost of getting certain places. What's the best advice you have for travelers right now? They're just going for it. Yeah, there's kind of, we're on the cusp of, I would think, the most epic tourism boom in history. I mean, the, never before is there's this much pent-up demand, yes. desire, resources as yes. well. Um, you know, people have stashed a lot of money away during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, the markets have been, uh, up until very recently, pretty, pretty growth-orientated. And, you know, you've saved money by not going places the last That's couple right. of years, and now you want to go everywhere and do everything. That's right. Um, so I, you know, there's a lot of pushback on this idea of a bucket list yes. that it's corny and it's, it's cheesy, it's cliche, it's overdone, and it is. I agree with all of that, 
But I also think it's a very powerful goal orientating tool yes. to help you identify what it is you actually want. What is on your bucket list? Mm. It's not, you know, it's very easy to say, oh, well, I would love to go to Antarctica. And then I say, why? Why are these things on your, what is drawing you to these places yes. or these uh, activities, these destinations, these events? What is drawing you? What do you hope to find there? Because I can tell you as somebody who's ticked off four bucket lists and um, that when you finally realize this lifetime goal, uh, angels don't start singing and there's, there's no confetti. It's not like, well done. <laughs> All that happens is you go, okay, wow, you feel good. You do feel good. And then you start thinking, what's next? <laughs>